Hello there! I am currently walking 800 kilometers through Italy with my parents along a trail known as the Via Francigena. And along this journey, as we're walking through tiny towns and villages, I'm seeing a side of Italy that I've never seen before. Not to mention another side of the Italian cuisine. We are literally cooking this meat on a stove. Usually when I go to an Italian restaurant, I know what I'm going to order before I even get there. Pizza or pasta. But here, I'm discovering the secondi menu, which is all, you know, meats and interesting seafoody, yeah. lots of different options. So I'm learning there's a lot more to Italian cuisine than just pizza and pasta. We continue to be blown away by the incredible scenery that seems to change every day as we make our way across the country. So we've seen all different types of landscapes and sceneries on this walk, but this is definitely a new one. We are currently walking through a cloud. Dad, you look like a zombie. Oh, it's so creepy. And uh, of course, my favorite thing to use when capturing walking routes and this beautiful scenery has been my Insta360 X3, which is my walking buddy. I don't go anywhere without this thing. And there really is no better tool to help capture an epic walk like this. Because it is a 360 camera, it works by taking the image from these two cameras and combining it into a 360 field of view. It means that when you use the selfie stick, it's invisible. So you can get some really cool, interesting shots. When you put it above your head, you can recreate kind of a drone shot. And you know, because I'm packing so light, no way am I taking a drone. So this is probably the closest thing I'm gonna get to that. Today, this video is sponsored by Insta360 and I'm gonna be taking you on a journey of the Italian countryside using this cute little camera. It's week one into our walk now, and I guess for some of us it has been not so easy. So first, it started off with the blisters. Yes. Mum, you got a record-breaking oh, blister within what? Huge. How many hours into oh, the walk? Two hours into the walk, I got a blister already. And uh, oh. the blisters have continued from there. Mum's yeah. actually developed blisters underneath her toenails. Okay, see. No, but explain to us what's happening over there. Well, I have an infection under my toenail and around the navel bed. At the moment, it kind of looks a little bit... Alien. I've not seen anything quite like this. I don't know how you got that. I don't know, but I'm impressed myself. How do you get a blister there? If I don't win the prize for best blister with this, I don't know what we're... <laughs> and you can't even come in and watch this video. The other yeah. room. I'm not even watching the screen of my video camera. I don't even know what I'm videoing right now. I don't think we'll show you a photo no. because everybody go... Hur! Yeah, so we've had definitely some physical challenges, uh, mental challenges too. Trying to force myself to pick up the camera, not just when things are rosy and beautiful and good, but also when things get a bit tough. And today's the first time that I felt, oh, things are getting a bit tough. It's day four. Today we're walking 25 kilometers and we're all a little bit worse for wear. mum has got a cold, dad's got some, what is it, tendonitis in your leg. I'm starting to get the aches and pains and it feels like this, this city that we're going for is just keeps getting further and further into the distance. But I know that at the end of this, it's gonna feel like an achievement, but you know, I think this walk isn't meant to be easy. It's going to challenge you in places, and I'm at the moment it's feeling a little challenging. Well, one thing about the bad days, <laughs> yeah, you need them because then they you make you appreciate how good the good days are. So a bad day where you're struggling and you're pushing and and you push through, you feel very satisfied at the end. Yeah. But then the next day, where your your body's got a bit stronger and it's easier. Yeah. You know, you're better and you realise, okay, well. I've got stronger, I'm better. You really walk through it and it's incredible to see the body adapt to a different way of life. One interesting thing, at the end of the walk, when you go back to civilization, you'll also have a down. You'll go back and you go back into normal life and it's like, oh, what do I do now? Because you've always got something to do on a walk. You yeah. walk. Um, but then when you're at home and you suddenly, you don't have to get up and walk. Yeah. What do I do? And you've got decisions to make and things to think. And you'll have blues when you get home too for a, yeah. a few days. I think that's what I'm really liking about this walk so far is that you're always doing something. You don't have to think about, oh, so what do I do now? Like what site do I go and sightsee? Like you're seeing the things along the way. The walk does the sightseeing for you and you know, for me, it's been, I think it's going to be an incredible five weeks to come. Anyway, let's get this walk really started. I think it's about four kilometers to our breakfast stop. Let's go. Should we tell her she's going the wrong way? <laughs> <laughs> 
Luckily for us, it's actually quite difficult to get yourself lost on this walk thanks to it being very well signposted. Walking through farms and countryside, it's a great opportunity to get to know the local flora and fauna. <laughs> That's speaking to the horse in Italian. It's an Italian horse. What else would it be? It's an Italian horse. Arrivederci, horse. I think we're just starting to walk through wine country, right, Dad? I'm pretty sure it's not banana country. <laughs> okay. It's only in the last few days we've started walking through some vineyards. We're not officially in Tuscany yet. I think we are in the province of Parma right now. Home of Parmesan and cheese and Parma ham. Yep. So as you can imagine, the ham is amazing here. Maybe I will able even get to show you some today. Another thing I'm loving about this walk, everywhere we go, there are these red poppies lining our path. It's so gorgeous. Anyway, we're inching closer and closer to today's breakfast destination, the town of Medesano, where we'll begin the hunt for the perfect cafe. So in the recent days, our breakfast is usually a croissant of some kind. To be honest, I haven't really seen any other options when it comes to breakfast in Italy so far. Could someone Italian let me know in the comments below why are croissants so popular in Italy? And are there any other options for breakfast? I went into the most beautiful local deli there and I got myself two things. Firstly, a marmalade croissant. I mean, this is croissant goals right here. I love the size. I love the sugar on top. Yes. But I saw her cutting up some of this prosciutto crudo for another customer and I just couldn't resist. So I also got myself some slices for myself and the fam, which I'm going to down a piece right now. No, oh, mum, I'm going for it. Oh, it looks beautiful. Oh. Can we try some? It's different to what we have in Australia. I mean, obviously, this is the home of it. But it's much softer. The one that we have at home is it's a bit chewier, it's a bit, a bit tougher, it's a lot more salty and, yeah. and dry. You can just see how soft and gorgeous this is. It really melts in your mouth. It's so incredible. <laughs> the salty and the sweet. That's really good. And after sitting down for 10-15 minutes, having some breakfast, having a coffee, yeah. we'll be right to go for work for the next Five to ten kilometers. We've got another. We've got another ten, eleven. Well, in that case, I guess we'd better get going back onto the trail and say goodbye to the town of Medesano. And it's not the case that every single part of this walk is in the you know beautiful countryside. There are some sections that we're walking next to a major road or, or a highway, or sometimes we're on asphalt, sometimes we're on rock, sometimes we're walking through knee-high grass. You know, right now we seem to be sharing the road with cyclists. There's a actually a Via Francigena for cyclists that follows the same. Route. which seems to be very very popular at least more popular than the one you do on foot we've seen very few other pilgrims actually only two or three uh, since we started a week ago um, so for the most part it's just been ourselves walking through the countryside it was right about now that I encountered a kink in the road metaphorically speaking though so in the last few days as I've mentioned mum and dad have been having their fair share of challenges I think my challenge just arrived I dropped my camera not the Insta360 X3, the sponsor of this video. That is a safe in my bag, uh, but my, my little vlogging camera, I dropped it and it is well and truly kaput. Um, so I'm feeling a little bit down, but luckily we have phones. <laughs> so I'll be filming the rest of this vlog using my phone as well. I hope it can be repaired. But the thing is, we're not really close to any big towns right now. So I guess it is what it is. Bummer, bummer, bummer. The Camino gives you what you need in that moment. Maybe what I need is a new camera. <laughs> Trying to, to see the bright side. Yeah, the, the <laughs> it's time to buy a new camera. Oh, but yeah, recording this to record the highs and the lows. Well, on the bright side, we have almost arrived at the next town. So fingers crossed there's something we can eat here. Ooh, we have a little, ca oh no, it's a hairdresser. I thought it was a cafe. We're always on the lookout for a cafe or a restaurant because you need to get the fuel into you. Like we had a few days that there were no restaurants along the way. When you don't have a proper lunch and time to rest a bit, it takes its toll. This is me on a day we didn't get our prescribed three meals a day. You don't know true terror until you've seen me hangry. Luckily for us all, there was a deli open. As I mentioned, we are walking through the province of Parma. So lunch is, you guessed it, Parma ham. Prosciutto twice in one day. Hey, no complaints here. Where are we from? Australia. Oh. <laughs> Do you, get, <laughs> do you get many Australians coming here? I don't think so. No. <laughs> you are the first. I think so. Why here? For Via Francigena. Ah, Via Francigena. We're walking to Rome. To Rome? Yeah. It's a long way. Yes. <laughs> yes. Would you like uh, two slices more? I think that looks good. 
<laughs> yeah. Now all we need is some bread. This is typical for Palma. Oh, wonderful. Oh, that looks so good. Delicious. This is typical you can find just in Palma. Really? Yes. Yeah, what's this kind of bread? What's yeah. the name of it? Mika. 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 Oh. Picnic lunch for three. We have some Palma ham, we have bread rolls, and we're going to go over here where we found a little place in the shade to eat it. Oh, look at that. Wow, that's a lot of ham. I'm excited to try this local style bread, which is super, super crispy. It kind of just crumbles away, but really soft on the inside. I think it's lovely, look at this. This bit is soft. This bit, crunchy. But not too tough. Not too tough, it doesn't, it so doesn't spike you in the top of your mouth. And I think it's gonna go so well with some of this super soft, it's a big piece of ham for a small piece of <laughs> small piece of bread. <laughs> mm. That soft and that crunchy. Oh my god, that's heaven. I mean, talk about a picnic. Yep. This is so amazing. Local bread, local ham, ham that's famous around the world, and we're literally having it mm. in the province mm. that it's famous for. Yeah, sometimes I have to check myself and look around and remind myself, like, look where you are. Like, this is incredible. Yeah, Can't believe is. we're here and doing this. It doesn't, it doesn't matter you drop your camera, it doesn't matter you drop your camera. <laughs> Sorry. Well, you know what they say, eat a bruschetta to ease your regretty. Okay, you got me. Nobody says that. <laughs> we are sufficiently fueled up from lunch. Feeling good, mom and dad? Feeling good. Ready to do the last, what is it, 5Ks to get to our destination? Six kilometers. Six kilometers. Today isn't the longest day of walking. Today we're walking, I think, like around 20 kilometers. But we've had a couple of 30 kilometers days, which are you really need to make sure you get your regular meals for those. Yeah, that's basically how many of the days go. You just walk, stop, eat, drink, walk, stop, eat, drink, and then eventually rest. Sometimes you need to walk, stop, eat, pee stop. Yes, that's another thing, pee stops. If you don't find a cafe, you have to find a bush. We're leaving our trail, literally, quite literally. Okay, back to business. No more rest stops until the end of the day now. We walked through a section of shrubby bush until we got our first glimpse of the Taro River, which we would need to cross to reach our final destination of Fornova di Taro. You can see it just on the other side there. And uh, you can see there's not a lot of water in this river. So we're just crossing over the river, the river. It's, from what I've heard, been an exceptionally dry season here in Italy. Um, they're in a period of drought. And as you can see by this river here, I mean, originally it's meant to go from this bank to that bank, but it's like completely dry. You've only got a little bit of a stream here, a little bit of a stream over there. But it looks like, according to the forecast, that there'll be uh, four or five days of rain coming up, which I guess will be very good. Good for the country, not so good for us as pilgrims. So that rain eventually did come and turned out to be not so good for us or the country for that matter. It was some of the worst flooding Italy has seen in years. So I'm really grateful we were able to stay safe, but not gonna lie, the rains did slow us down a lot in the second half of our walk. We were carrying what felt like kilos of mud on our feet. It was really slow going. Anyway, let's get over this bridge. And that's our destination right there. That's where we're gonna be staying tonight. We've arrived. Beautiful town here. Wow, look at this road. That's gorgeous. We have arrived in the beautiful Fornova di Taro, and now the problem is just finding our accommodation. We rang last night, and we're staying, I think, in like church accommodation. So accommodation along the way for pilgrims can be very, very affordable, usually around 10 euro a night, because it's provided by a lot of the churches along the way, and they're called donativos. You can just donate how much money that you feel is appropriate, and usually they suggest around 10 euros. So tonight we're in that kind of accommodation. The problem is just finding it. After some wandering around and interactions with helpful locals later, we found the church and the pilgrim accommodation that sat right beside it. Here we are at the, the parochial alberga. We're checking in and we're getting our passport stamped and we've met some other pilgrims, Julia and Alessandro, and we're getting stamps. We uh, Here, here, gracias. <laughs> Thank you. Hey. Whoa. Whoa. Wow. 
we were taken up to our accommodation, which I learned was actually fully booked that night with pilgrims. It was our first time on the entire trip being surrounded by so many other pilgrims and it was really exciting to meet others doing this walk. For anyone who may be interested, this walk gets increasingly busy as the route gets closer to Tuscany and it's at its busiest within Tuscany itself for obvious reasons. I mean, it's so freaking beautiful there. On some of the days in Tuscany, we were walking in packs of 10 to 20 pilgrims. So we have our room here. With a beautiful view here too. I mean, how Italian is this? So rooms at Donativo's are quite simple. You've got a single bed per person and disposable bed sheets and pillow covers. The first thing we usually do when we get into our accommodation is make our beds. Then we just spend the afternoon, you know, pottering around, doing some laundry. And you know, I'm not one to get excited by doing laundry, but when I see a self-service laundromat in a town we're staying in, I'm like a kid on Christmas. So because I've brought such limited items on this walk, pretty much every day I am cleaning my clothes. Usually that looks like me in the bathroom in the sink, washing it with my own detergent that I brought, but sometimes they'll have like a self-service laundry kind of concept, which is what we're gonna do today. So this is a luxury on the walk actually. Once chores are completed, it's time to find a bar, indulge in a beverage or two, then relax in the afternoon sun until it's time for dinner. So earlier today I mentioned that we had only bumped into two pilgrims along the way so far but suddenly in this town there's a massive group of us and we're all gonna go to dinner together somewhere in this town. It's so nice it feels very communal now. The Socks and Sandals Pilgrim Brigade made its way through town towards the restaurant where I had gnocchi, my go-to favorite pasta. <laughs> so surprise surprise dinner is finished. I felt too awkward vlogging at dinner with new friends and new pilgrims so I just kept the camera away and um, the eyes ate first tonight, not the camera, which was a novelty for me to be sure. <laughs> but I have learned, there was an Italian at our table, I have learned that gnocchi is kind of looked down upon. Gnocchi, mm. yeah, apparently. It's not no pasta. Yeah, no, no, it's, it's not pasta. It's, it's not. Potato. It's yeah, potato. he described it as a, a weekend pasta or like a, a, a Monday, party. A Monday, a, Monday a Monday pasta. Monday night pasta. So, whatever that means, um, I am going to have to get out of my box and try some new things. So, in the next few days, I'm going to just be asking for the local specialty, whatever that happens to be. Anyway, guys, that's going to be the end for our video today. Thank you so much for watching. This is just like a typical kind of walking day for us. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing too flashy. Um, but yeah, everything's lovely. Everything's, everything's lovely, lovely and looking forward to the next, what, five or so weeks of yeah, walking yeah. left. <laughs> um, and of course, thank you to Insta360 X3 for sponsoring this video. Yep. I'm sure the footage will look brilliant as always and really like capture the walking trip. And if you guys are interested in learning more about the Insta360 X3, maybe getting one for yourself, you can use the link in my description where if you purchase, you're actually going to get a free gift as Ooh. well, a free Ooh. accessory. So Ooh. check that out, guys. And as always, please don't forget to Oh, this little, this, this hill. Man, trying to, it's a big hill. It's a big hill. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting fitter, but I'm still not fit. Um, don't forget to, what, Dad? S L C. Yes. Subscribe, like, and comment. <laughs> she does all this work. We're walking. We're walking. And, she, <laughs> and she dropped a camera. And not the, not the, uh, the 360. I broke my camera today, guys. My, camera. my vlogging camera. So, Very sad. Uh, oh, there's oh, a car. Oh. And don't get hit by a car. Don't anyway. <laughs> Anyway, that'll be it from us, guys. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye.